Hey everybody, welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 42. In this tutorial we are going to begin making our model class. Let's go ahead and create a new header under our graphics filter for our model. And we are going to just call this model And now let's do the same thing for the CPP file. Next, as usual, let's go up to show all files and let's drag the model.cpp and .h up to the graphics folder. Our model header it will look something like this. Uh, we need to include vertex to use our vertex struct. We need to include vertex buffer because our model will have a vertex buffer. Index buffer because we will have an index buffer. And for now, we are going to also include constant buffer. In this way, our model can update the buffer, the constant buffer that will have our worldview projection matrix in it. So we're going to have an initialize function that takes a pointer to our device a pointer to the device context, a pointer to the texture, and then it takes in a reference to our constant buffer for our vertex shader. Next we have a function for setting the texture if we want to change it uh, after the model's been initialized. We have our draw function which will just take in the view projection matrix. We have a function for updating our world matrix but in this tutorial, we are not going to put in the set position and rotation and stuff yet. So all that this update world matrix will be doing for now will just be setting our world matrix to the identity matrix. Here is where we are storing the uh, variables we received during the initialize call. And then this is our vertex buffer and our index buffer. Now, in, in the long run, we'll have it where we actually pass in a file name or something and we populate the index buffer and vertex buffer data from that. For now, we are just going to populate our index and vertex buffer data the same way that we were doing uh, in our graphic CPP towards the bottom where we had created these vertices here and these indices here. So let's take a look at these functions. So for initialize, um, I haven't put in the vertex or index buffer uh, code because we'll do that in just a second. But the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory. We are just setting these values that we passed in the initialize call. And then we update the world matrix. We have set texture, which just sets our texture variable. For draw, we are updating the world view projection matrix. So we are taking our world matrix and multiplying it by the view projection we passed in. We are transposing it because keep in mind, it will be in column major, or no, it will be in row major format. And HLSL expects column major format. In the future, we might actually just specify row major in the HLSL shader so that we don't have to uh, transpose every time. And then we are applying changes to update that uh, shader. Next, we actually need to set the constant buffer for our vertex shader. So then we are setting our vertex shader to use this constant buffer that just got updated. Next, we need to set the texture for our pixel shader. And then we are setting the index and vertex buffer so that we can draw. And then we are calling draw index. So it's pretty similar to what we had and as I said before, update world matrix is just currently setting the world matrix to the identity matrix. So let's look at initializing our vertex and index buffer data. Let's go to the graphics CPP where we were doing it previously. And I'm just going to copy what we had. Let's see. I think that was all of it. All right, and let's go back to the model CPP. So before we had a COM pointer for our device, but we just pass in a pointer to the device for this initialize function. So we don't need the dot get. Um, for the indices, similar thing, we don't need the dot get. And I think I had named it 
index buffer. All right, so that should be initializing them. And really, I should probably put a try catch here. Let's see. Since we were doing the com error if failed. All right, I believe we are almost ready to utilize this model class. Let's go into our graphics header. And previously, you know, we were including vertex. We can take that out and index buffer and vertex buffer and constant buffer because these are all inside of our model header. So we'll include the model header. Let's go down to where we uh, had this. So we won't need the index buffer or vertex buffer because that's going to be in our model class. Let's just instantiate a model and just call it model for now. All right, and let's go to our graphic CPP towards the bottom where we were initializing the index and vertex buffer, initialize scene. And what we are going to do, I'm gonna put that H result back in, is after we have initialized our textures and our constant buffers, we will initialize our models. So we'll just do if model initialize and we'll pass in the pointer to our device, pointer to our device context, the default texture we want to start with. So let's say uh, we want to start with the pavement texture and then our, ver our constant buffer for our vertex shader. Let's pass that in. And if it uh, we'll say if it fails, we will return false out of this. And I need to call git on the pavement texture. All right, so next let's look at actually drawing this model. So let's go back up. Uh, for now, I'm going to take out the uh, blending, alpha blending stuff we were doing. As we discussed in the last tutorial, there can be uh, issues with alpha blending and I just really wanted to cover how to do it, but I don't want to have a big focus on that right now. So I'm going to take out uh, the code for updating our pixel shaders, constant buffer, and let's see, we can take out all of this code. And we don't need to set our vertex shader constant buffer because our um, model will actually be doing that. In the translation, um, we can't currently move our model, but we will do that later. So all we will do is we will do this, model, draw, and then we need to pass in the view projection matrix. So we get view matrix times get projection matrix. And one last thing is uh, we were using that blend state we had created to enable transparency, but if we just want to use the default blend state, we can actually just pass in null right here, and then it will use the default blend state where everything is opaque. And since we are not currently worried about the transparency, we're just going to pass that in. And if I didn't screw anything up, we should see a cube, but let's see. Let's see what we get, boys. Oh, I messed something up. Let's see, what was it? Um, oh yeah, I had, I had noticed this when I was testing this. I'm not really sure what the deal is. I don't know if it's the order of the headers or what, but um, for some reason, unique pointer is not being recognized here in our vertex buffer header. So I just need to include memory because that's where unique pointer is. I don't know why it was working before, but um, yeah, I'm guessing just the order of headers. Maybe there's some. Maybe it's it is defined in these, but it wasn't being included because maybe there's some if def check. I'm not sure, but all right, let's test this again. See if there was anything else I missed. All right, and we don't see anything, so clearly I goofed. 
All right, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, it took me a little bit longer than I had expected to figure out what was going on. But inside of our draw call for our model, where I had put uh, set vertex buffers for the number of buffers, I had put zero. I should have put one. So we start at slot zero. We're setting the vertex buffer. Uh, we're setting one, you know, vertex buffer. And uh, before I had zero, so it wasn't setting the vertex buffer correct. So let's test this out, see what it looks like. All right, and there we go. Now we have our little cube in the world. And let's see. Our graphic CPP has also gone down a bit in lines of code, so that's good. I know we removed some code, you know, like the alpha stuff, and um, removed... Uh, I guess the translation and stuff, but now that will be handled inside of the actual model. So I'm go going to go ahead and end this tutorial right here. In the next tutorial, we are going to add in the functionality that we have similar to our camera. So for example, in our camera, we have these options like adjust position, set position, set rotation, adjust rotation, and then to get the vectors to determine where it's looking and stuff you know getting the rotation and position so we're going to add this functionality to our model in the next tutorial